Well folks, it's time for the second part of our look at Trigun, and for this video I'd like to look at, well, a lot of what's looked at, i.e. the setting. While Trigun's setting may initially seem either quite bland or unimpressive, it has a certain attention to detail and realism that I find quite engrossing, and the ways it synthesizes itself from a mix of homage to older American westerns and Japanese reimaginings of them is fascinating. Now obviously this is an anime, so it isn't the peak of realism, but in terms of suspension of disbelief, I find it quite excellent. You see, while the world itself is a distant planet set in pseudo-old western times, it feels extremely organic, and this lends itself to the suspension of disbelief. It never seems to contradict itself and always seems to be in line with what is meant to be, that is, a facsimile of the great deserts of the American Southwest and the old western set there. Like the American Southwest, the land of Gunsmoke is a widely deserted land, with scattered communities across it which serve as islands of civilization in an ocean of sand and the harsh lands. It is a land which can be lived on, but in its natural state must be understood to be naturally harsh to humankind. It is this harsh land which serves to set up Bash as a tough and effective gunman, and also serves to feed the subversion of expectations when it is revealed that he is actually an extreme pacifist, and a living piece of lost technology. On the topic of technology, while the technology is not completely uniform on Gunspoke, Gunsmoke, this also serves to be in line with the lore of the world, and in turn enhance it. It would make sense that the levels of technological development are a bit uneven, as not all technology would have survived the rough landing, and enough of it would, and enough knowledge of it would, survive though to give people a semblance of technology. Enough technology would have survived to give them, the people, enough to get by, but not necessarily enough for uniform development, or even extensive development. This uneven and roughshod component, though, feeds into the frontier setting of Gunsmoke and lends further to the suspension of disbelief, all the while making the show setting a more fantastical one. What I found to be the strongest assistance to the suspension of disbelief, though, was the subtle detail that the characters are all consistently given and referred to by names. Now, when I say characters, I do not mean single episode characters central to the plot, like, say, Stan the Man here, but many of the tertiary, tertiary characters as well. In the same episode that Stan and Bostock are you know, somewhat central to, many of the characters that were henchmen in the hostage situation were also named. Now these are characters behind characters behind characters, which themselves only show up for a few minutes in one episode. They didn't just say Henchman 2 or Townsfolk 17 or that guy. No, there's actually dialogue referring to them by name. And yes, this could be argued that these are throwaway dialogue lines, and yeah, to some extent they probably are, but there was just something about this detail that stood out to me, and I think that something is how close all the people seem in the show. You see, frontier life isn't easy after all, so it makes sense that all the town folks will be close to each other. It seems they would have genuine bonds and interactions, and that they would be genuinely linked to their communities, and these communities in turn feel alive. This in turn makes the towns and people of Gunsmoke seem more organic, organic and thus feed into the viewer suspending their disbelief. It feels like the viewer is walking through real towns filled with real people, creating warmth and interest. The fact that every city is uniquely designed visually, and all its citizens act differently and have town-specific mindsets also feed into this, and a lack of uniformity furthers the feeling of drifting, just as Vash drifts along. The lack of any specific setting for more than a couple episodes means that, that just like the 60 billion double dollar man, the viewer too is a drifter. It serves to keep them on their feet as they follow Vash and crew around Gunsmoke and explore the western es esque world. This western esque world of Trigun paying homage to the westerns of old. The setting, the semi setting emulates these quite well and lets the viewer know that this is supposed to be a western inspired piece with many western themes and imageries and analogies. There are a lot of shots typically associated with westerns too, like any of the shots of Vash in certain gun dueling poses, or some of the more scenic shots like this, establishing shots that were common in many old western pieces of the 1950s. Shots like this are the strongest bit of connective tissue tying Trigun to the inspirations of the 1950s, and it is this connective tissue which makes the anime feel older than it is. And I mean that in a positive way. It feels like a relic of sorts, of a lost time which never really happened. It is not a western, but a sort of pseudo-western wishing to pay respect to the westerns of old. Even the name of the planet supports this, as Gunsmoke is the name of one of the most influential and longest-running western te television series, and radio dramas, which ran from 1955 to 1975. And yes, I know that in the manga the planet is called No Man's Land, but in the anime it's referred to as Gunsmoke. Uh, back to the point, what is the point of all this western imagery though? One of the points is to feed into the character of Ash and, sh and show how it is analogous to the older character of the Drifting Gunman, doing right but constantly being followed by wrong. A stoic individual who has the means to defend himself, but does so responsibly in a rather wild and lawless land. A land rather desolate, but still full of good, hard-working folks and communities, 
The setting is a sensationalized version of the American desert to fit a sensationalized version of an American Western hero. It is a Japanese romanticization of an American romanticization of a somewhat vaguely historical figure. This means that the end product is a very unique synthesis, which is distinct from both the source material and anything else, really. This synthesis is a key component of the OST, in fact, the original soundtrack, which is the most synthesized element of all, and ties together the grounded imagery of the Old West and the wonder of the Japanese space cowboy reinterpretation of it. Initially, the original soundtrack seems pretty, you know, Western. There's a lot of guitar and some slower pieces which would fit in any, you know, old cowboy Western. In shots invoking these shows, you will hear straight-laced parts of pieces like Never Would Have Been Wor- or Never Could Have Been Worse. The Trigun will lean into its Western roots and inspirations. But as the OST grows and new situations and interactions occur, we hear more experimental pieces, we hear more folksy pieces, we hear more creative variety, and it is this variety which helps give the show so much personality, as it explores so many different musical genres and, ta and takes the viewer along a musical journey as such. Take the song Winners, for example. A fun piece landing in the Trigun's fantastical elements, but one which definitely does not make me think cowboy. It has an air all its own. Another great example of variety is the piece Perfect Night. As the soundtrack is so varied, it even veers in the heavier and more industrial type sound, and these pieces are often used in situations specifically involving lost technology. The use of a genre so removed from the western is fitting, as it accompanies images which are also quite removed from the western of old. Combining imagery of lost tech and sound of industrial music synthesize an atmosphere almost perfectly antithetical to the old western, and this serves to give the show all the more of its own personality. It serves to break up the cozy and or engrossing atmosphere and let us know that something is up. While the original soundtrack is excellent, it, and the setting, also tells us, hey, this isn't just some old cowboy thing from the 1950s. It tells us that Gunsmoke, while analogous to the Old West, is not quite that. It tells us that while Vash is analogous to the traditional gunman, he isn't quite that. It tells us that while Trigun as a series is analogous to a western of sorts, it isn't quite that. It tells us that all these characters, and all these elements, and this show, in fact, is all unique, and they all stand on their own terms. They are their own creation, their own synthesis of two very different worlds combined to create a very beautiful and engrossing one.